Hey everybody, welcome back. In this episode, we are painting furniture black. About eight months ago, I made a video called How to Paint Furniture Black, and those methods still work today. However, I've learned a few things since then, and I would change things up a bit. So in this video, that's what we're doing. We're just gonna go through the methods of how I would paint furniture black today. So without further ado, let's get started. First, I would start by cleaning the entire piece with a degreasing product. Here I'm using crud cutter, but sometimes I just use warm water and dish soap. I simply just spray the product all over the piece and then I grab a rag and just wipe it all off. As I was wiping the drawers, I realized we should take the hardware off because grease usually hides behind there and then we wipe it up and then we can take the drawers out. Then we continue to wipe the piece, but then after that we should get some warm water and just clean off any of the degreasing product because we don't want that on our surface either. And after that I take a dry rag and just wipe the entire surface so we don't have any water sitting on the wood. Clean the inside out and sometimes you just might find random stuff. Here's an eraser. After the water completely evaporates, let's use some 120 grit sanding paper to get started and let's start sanding this piece. We're not sanding to remove the old finish. We're sanding to get a smooth surface and we're sanding so the paint adheres as best as possible. It's pretty easy to see the difference between the scuffed surface and the glossy surface. You want to make sure you scuff your surface up because the glossy surface, your paint will likely just peel right off and you don't want that to happen. So make sure to sand the entire surface that you're painting. As I was sanding one side, I can feel some wax on the surface. So instead of sanding it into my project, I grabbed a card scraper and just scraped off all the wax. Then I continued to sand with my 120 grit sanding paper. After sanding everything with 120, now I'm using 240 grit to make everything as smooth as possible before we can get started on priming. I am using a reused 240 grit because I'm actually out of sandpaper, so I need to order some more. And let's not forget, we do the same process with the drawers. On the edges of the drawers and the nightstand, I use 240 grit uh, sandpaper by hand, because if you use an electric sander, you can actually damage the corners, so just be careful. After sanding, I use a tack cloth to clean up the dust because if you have dust on your surface, it probably won't be smooth after it's painted. And also to remove the dust, it helps your paint adhere better to the surface. I'm using Rust-Oleum Flat Black Primer. You can use a black or gray primer, it doesn't really matter. But in my last video where I painted furniture black, I didn't prime. You don't had to prime furniture that's black because you likely won't see any bleeds or anything but it does help with your paint adhering to the surface, so I'm using a black primer in this video. Also, since we had wax on the side, I really wanted to cover that up with an oil-based primer, so it's good to throw that on over the entire piece because who knows where this piece has been and what it has on it. So here's what it looks like after priming. And now we should sand down the primed surface because sometimes the spray cans will leave a rough surface, but this time it actually was pretty smooth, but you always want to sand in between your coats until the final one anyways. After doing a light sanding, and I mean light sanding, you can just use a tack cloth to clean up any of that dust that's just sitting on the surface. Now we're ready for paint, I like to make sure my brush is wet before we start brushing because this just makes everything glide better. And I'm using Fusion Mineral Paint, coal black, 
so I'm not using a bare paint like I did last time. I've actually started using Fusion Mineral Paints and I like this product, so I'm going to use it. So simply just dab your brush in a tiny bit at the start and then we can get started on painting. When painting with a brush, you, you might get brush strokes, but the thing is you, you want to go in light, thin coats. So just take your time and make sure you take your brush and go in the same direction all the time or you're going to have crisscrosses and just uneven looking surfaces and it won't look good. If you keep your brush in the same direction, your brush strokes will look natural and that's kind of what you want to do with the brush. You can use a spray gun to apply the paint if you want to, and I have before. I usually do that on bigger projects. When it's small projects like this, I just use a brush and just apply it like that. Pretty simple. Before the paint is too dry, I like to lightly go over it one more time with my brush just to give it a nice even look. After applying the first coat, I take my brush and just wrap it up in a plastic bag so it doesn't dry out on me. And then we can get started on the second coat, but first let's do a bit of light sanding just to make sure everything is smooth. I'm using a 220 grit sanding sponge and you just lightly go over the paint. You don't want to scratch it up or anything like that. Then I use a tack cloth just to clean up all the dust. Finally, we get started on our second coat, and with this paint and this project, I only needed two coats of black paint, and the coverage was perfect, because we did a black prime as well, so three coats in total. And another tip and reminder, I did dampen my brush again under the sink, just to, just to make sure the paint would glide, and everything is much smoother that way. You can see after I apply the paint, I kind of just go back and forth randomly, but after that, my final pass through, I just lightly take the tip of the brush and go from back to the front of the piece, just to make everything smooth and match up together. After letting our paint dry, we can move on to the clear coat. I'm using Barathane Diamond Wood Finish. It's a clear satin. So this is already mixed from another project, but I'm gonna be applying this with a spray gun. So this is the water-based poly, and I put in 10% water. Since it already had a bit of water in it before, I just put a tiny bit more in, and there's already black, coal black fusion mineral paint in it, and you only put a few drops of that in, and then you stir it up, and it's ready to go. Make sure you clean the inside of your piece so dust doesn't come flying out and landing in your, your finish. It's also nice for dust control to set up a plastic drop cloth or just have some drop cloth so dust isn't flying around. It's also nice to get your piece off the ground a tiny bit. I did have cans of paint under there, but they're usually pretty dusty from sitting around, so I'm using my painter's pyramids just to lift them up. Quickly, let's give it up to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an enormous online learning community that has thousands of classes for creators. If you have any hobbies or you're thinking about starting something new, Skillshare will have a class for you. There's some cool classes like Transform Your Furniture with Chalk Paint by Paula Pierce. Also, Furniture Making, a Simple Modern Stool by Austin School of Furniture and Design. But one Skillshare class that I really want to take is called Productivity for Creatives. Build a System that Brings Out Your Best by Thomas Frank, who is a YouTuber, author, and entrepreneur. This class is about increasing productivity as a creator. I would love to get some systems in place so I could provide you guys more videos weekly and just overall become more organized with my work life. Another great thing about Skillshare is that it's designed specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads. Plus, they're always launching new premium classes. With an annual subscription, you're only paying $10 a month. There's nothing better than getting better. Accomplishing growth is extremely satisfying and Skillshare's online classes make it possible. But even better, to the first 1,000 to click the link in the description, we'll get a free trial of a premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Anyway, let's get back to the video. I always test spray as well just to make sure the settings are correct. With my Wagner Flexio 590, I usually have the setting on 7 or 8, 
and I also have it on the least amount of product coming out of the gun as possible. With any spray gun I used, I start spraying before the project, but you really want to make sure you do that with this one because this gun spits out the poly in like clumps before, so just I start spraying the wall or something and then I start spraying my piece. In my experience, spraying the poly on is the best way to do it. I get the smoothest and the cleanest results. It's important to look at the piece you're spraying first to make sure it's dust free. If it isn't, I just take a tack cloth and just do a quick sweep over and then I can get started. I like to apply at least three coats of poly, sometimes I do four, sometimes I do more, it all depends on the project. But after you're done spraying your poly, you take your leftovers, you pour it back into the can, and then you clean out your spray gun. After your poly has completely dried, you can attach your original or new hardware. So I just throw this stuff on, and then I use some finishing wax and just throw it on the slider so everything slides nice. So let's take a look at this nightstand before we started painting it black. And here is what it looks like after. As you can see the finish is super smooth. If you look close enough and you get close enough there are tiny little brush strokes but they're all in the same direction so everything looks natural and you can't even tell unless you literally go up right next to the piece. But overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Here are some shots with better lighting in the garage just to kind of see. But if you guys have any questions, please throw them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. But lastly, hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. I appreciate you guys watching and I will catch you in the next one.